I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Good news, Philk. I got the ATR gone, but it was still in the in this one. It's just on my other computer. By the way, uh, tomorrow we will be releasing the Bring On the Hockey Season in the vein of We Didn't Start the Fire. By the way, uh, Stephen, I have to send you uh, Billy Joel's Vienna. So you can enjoy that. By the way, thank me later because it's a great song. But welcome to... Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where we gauge our topic on, uh, we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you really confident? You're gonna buy everybody around? You just, you just feel so so. You just have a beer, or, eh, I'm gonna just take a shot, you know, or maybe you just need a shot. So first things first. Usually we save like one of the funny lines for the end, but we gotta say this, Filk. The New York Rangers will score a goal versus the New York Islanders ever again. Um, are you looking for the masochist in me to say shot? Because no. that's, I mean, no. it's definitely going to be buying everybody. Around. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. More, more <laughs> obviously, we're buying everybody around on this, but yeah, it, it's just their their performance was just pathetic against yeah, them. It was preseason on, on Sunday. It was preseason, so uh, I'm not too mad or concerned or anything like that about it. I just wanted to see a goal because I wanted to hear the damn song. Oh, like, God. I'm I, like, I I'm in, I, I feel like I'm the Hanson brothers in Slapshot when the ref is bothering them about, you know, chastising them fight about fighting with the, you know, during the game and stuff like that. I'm listening to the freaking song. Oh, wait, hold on. Anthony, will the Rangers ever score a goal on the New York Islanders? I mean, this is obviously <laughs> silly satire, but I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, I get it because the Islanders have oh, shot the shot. Rangers the last couple of times they've got them. So, yeah. I, All right. Well, uh, I'm just going to make the clean sweep because I, I also put this one in. Do you guys know who the last New York Ranger was to beat a New York Islander mm-hmm. goaltender? Throw it all down in the comments below. I will uh, tell Philk. Wasn't that exactly Alexi Lafreniere? In only a few seconds. Who? Wasn't it Alexei Lafreniere? It was not Alexei Lafreniere. So, the side salad of the of the NHL. I love that one. I'm gonna wait till our second topic before I could get it. I want to see if somebody could get it in the comments without looking it up. But, <laughs> all right, moving on to the real one. On the next one, Braden Schneider could take the sixth spot over a Nils Lundqvist. John, I'm gonna say shot. Uh, you know what? I, I like to bring up discourse and, and have uh, have fun with everything like that, and, and and just you know play devil's advocate. Sometimes I think Braden Schneider has definitely opened some eyes with last night's play. With that said, that was like a C squad from Boston. So let's see what happens in the next few games, and then we'll take it from there. But for now, uh, it's a shot. Um, I'm going to say only beer Uh, contracts also play into some of these situations too. options. Uh, Same thing happens in baseball, but the only reason why is if he wows everybody right away, but they're not bringing over Nels Lundqvist and um, getting him in here to make sure that he's not going to get the roster spot. The very worst case scenario, him and Schneider end up sharing a spot for a little bit, but I don't think that's going to happen. Anthony. Um, yeah, I think I think this one is a shot. I mean, I think it's Nils Lundqvist's spot to lose. Um, I really do. Um, Schneider, I think, has some upside. Um, but I, I think if any young Ranger defenseman takes a spot here, it's going to be Lundqvist. All right. I'm going to look through. We got uh, we got Ke'Andre Miller. Uh, there's a big Lundqvist fan. I think he's got the inside. It's not a done deal, but he's got the inside track. It's not Brandon Smith yet. So we still haven't gotten the right answer on who scored the last goal against the, uh, against the Islanders. That's, that's enough to make me just shake my head. Still. We're going to go to the Islanders right now. Then answer that other question. Kiefer Bellows will be an ex Islander very soon. Anthony. Um, I, I, I think I might have to go around here. Um, I just don't, I don't think he's done enough to, you know, elevate his game 
to show Barry Trotz he could be one of these 13th or 14th forwards that make the team. Um, I think there are guys that are playing or performing better than him right now, um, and he's waiver eligible. And even though, you know, he struggled to stick, um, he does have an NHL level shot and release. Um, so I think if he goes through waivers, being that he makes, you know, league minimum, well, Lou never announced what the, what the numbers were in the deal. Um, but I got to say it's going to, you know, roughly 750000 Someone will take him on waivers. John? I'm going to – buy everybody around on this. Uh, like Anthony said, I, I just – I never saw him take that next step in development in anything other than his shooting. It just – his shot is great. He, he really can absolutely fire the puck, has a cannon. But his skating is okay. His hockey sense really isn't there. He's – Probably one of the worst playmakers in the NHL if you consider him an NHL player. He's really just not a good playmaker by any means. And I'm saying that as somebody who's watched almost every game of Chris Kreider's career, by the way. So, yeah, Kiefer Bellows, to me, just doesn't have the other facets of the game down at an NHL level. And I don't see him sticking. So I I think he's over in Europe sooner than later. Uh, we're going to make this a clean sweep, guys, because it's definitely Keeper Bell is going to be an ex-Islander. He's not going to get a roster spot, and it's only a matter of time until he asks for a trade or is claimed on waivers. He might go somewhere else and actually develop. I think it's just he was a guy that never really found his niche with the Islanders. He, he had a great juniors, uh, world juniors every single time. If you look back at the best Olympic moments that, or the best team Team USA moments, in one of my first videos, Kiefer Bellows is on every one of those. Curtis and Lazar more. was a hero at the World Juniors. Just remember that. Who was Curtis Lazar, and he's and playing Casey four Middlestad five minutes in Boston on that one. So yeah. two, sometimes two final it might things. not be that. By the way, we do have a winner in who was the last New York Ranger to score a goal against the New York Islanders. Of course, it would be none other than Stat Boy Steven getting – oh, hold on. Comment came through and it switched me. It was Kevin Rooney. Kevin Rooney in that 6-1 to one debacle at, at the Coliseum. That's yeah. when the New York Rangers lost um, <clears throat> Jacob Truba in that game. I believe they lost Chris Potter <laughs> in that game too and they missed it. Just, oh. Mark. <laughs> would have thrived on the John Spano. Oh, oh my God! Oh two final, my goodness! Two final things on Bellows, Mark. One, you spelt Kiefer wrong. It's K I E. You switched the E and the I. <laughs> um, sorry. Oh, <laughs> the second, um, the second thing is, if he goes through waivers, being that his age and what he makes, um, and his ability to shoot, I think a team will claim him. However, Lou Lamorello isn't a guy that really likes to lose anybody for for nothing. Um, so if the Islanders do decide he's not going to make the team, um, I wonder if he just tries to trade him to another team for, you know, a late round pick or an equally struggling player at like a different position, maybe. Um, but I, I don't know if he'd want to risk losing him for nothing. Yeah, I, I think that could happen too. I, and by the way, uh, as, as I kind of look at it with his name just now, first off, I should know how to spell Kiefer with all the years I was watching uh, 24. But on the other hand, I go with the office space sign. Not going to work here anymore anyway. <laughs> Samir Naga Naga not going to be working here anymore. Yeah. It's it's why why is Kiefer not on the Islanders? Because he bellows. So anyway. Yeah. See, it's kind of like blows, except mm-hmm. anyway. So all that news that came out. Play the out, cricket sound. <laughs> well, actually, we got it right here. Just throw that in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but moving back. All the news that came out last week of our favorite topic over the summer. Jack Eichel is right to have hard feelings with the Buffalo Sabres. Mr. John Fulkowski. What are you all drinking? Because I'm I'm buying everybody around on this one. It just <laughs> you, it, it, what they did to him was stupid. Kevin Adams and I've said this for months and months now has made this personal. 
instead of trying to facilitate a hockey deal and getting a headache out of his hair and out of the organization and, and trying to do what's really best for the team, he's really just dragged Jack Eichel through the mud. And there's no reason for any of this. There really isn't. And to, to a point before that, Anthony, you were talking about, you know, well, if with Kaprizov, you know, you, you said that they weren't going to get enough value for Kirill Kaprizov. Anytime you trade a superstar player away, there's never enough pl- value going in return for like said player. There, very, very, very rarely are there ever fair value returns for superstar players. And Jack Eichel is not going to be an exception to that rule. He wants out. He's pissed off the organization, as he has every right to be. And they're mishandling this whole situation. Kevin Adams has tanked his value. So instead of doing something and letting them have the surgery or just trading them away to a team that will deal with it, Kevin Adams has dragged them through the mud and made this a big, gigantic problem. So, yeah, he has every right to feel have hard feelings uh, against the Sabres. And any player that refuses to sign there or a player that wants out afterwards has every right to feel the way that they do because – Kevin Adams is not just a front runner for the Peter Chiarelli Award. Kevin Adams is the front runner for the "I need to take a hike and never be involved with hockey again" award. It's uh, and by the way, um, I'm going to go and buy everybody around as well. Uh, which, by the way, it's always good to run into me. I was buying lots of drinks on Sunday, but <laughs> it's ah. it's just this. You got to be kidding me! The way they're they're treating this guy. This guy is supposed to be your franchise, your, and again, I know he's disgruntled. I know he wants out. I know all this other stuff, but come on. You just now, like you just said, you call, you cost him. Hey, Gene, by the way, uh, you just cost him a, a spot on team USA. So now it's not even just about him at the NHL level. Now you're impacting the team USA and this guy's dream to go play in the Olympics and represent his country. And now, and they stripped him of his captaincy. So you're basically saying you're going to trade him. How much, how much more do you want to do? You want to take pictures of him in the shower or something like, and, and leak that on the internet. But the, just, this is humiliating and degrading and it's unbelievable. If the guy, if the guy, if the situation, it, it's, it's just terrible. End this. The, the fans deserve better. Never mind the player. Never mind the organization. The, the fans deserve better. And if he was a New York Ranger, I'd be going nuts right now. I'm already going nuts. Anthony, please stop me from talking. Uh, shot. No, round. Kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like, for instance... I don't think he has hard feelings about being stripped of the sea. I really don't think he cares about that. I'm sure she understands he doesn't want to be there. A team needs a captain and it's there. My, I think the issue that he's having is that even though it's in the CBA where the team gets to dictate, dictate medical procedures, they should just let him have the surgery that, that he wanted. Just, just, just give him the, uh, the power to make his own choice in that regard. You know he's not going to be part of your team, you know, for long anyway. You might as well just let him do it and then send him on his way. But um, yeah, how they Thank how, you. how they how they handled this um, is raw. I, listen, I could see. Here's what I could see: if if Jack Eichel was content with Buffalo, and this was never a thing that he was that he was going to be traded, and he loved it there, I could see Buffalo saying, "All right, well, no, I want I want you to have this surgery because you're a big part of our team going forward." But the fact that he wants out and everyone knows it's going to end. Just, just let him have the surgery. And listen, I, I understand that, you know, this surgery has never been performed on an NHL player, but you know, it's his body, his choice, right? I mean, that you hear that term used, um, just, they, they should have just let him do it. Um, and they're just, they're just playing hardball and, and sticking by the rules to a T in the sense, oh, well, it's in our contract that we have the, you know, we have the right to determine their team doctors say no. Um, so this is just going in circles now, guys. It's, 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 I don't see an end to this in sight. Um, I really don't. Uh, it's clear that it's starting to look like he possibly may not play this year because he's, unless the Sabres wilt on his choice to have a surgery, I don't, I don't see how or, or why or it will. It's, it's unfortunate for all parties involved. Buffalo, because they're not getting back anybody they could use for Eichel if they would trade him. Eichel, because he's not getting to play hockey. 
Um, so everybody loses here. And I just can't believe it really dragged on this far. I, I really don't. It's, it's again, it's, it's like trying to buy it. It's trying to sell a car <laughs> or get rid of a car that you know is going to need work. And they're still expecting you to pay sticker price from when it came out of the factory for it. Now, first, yep. get the job, get the work done. If you did that, because again, if, if the team acquires Jack Eichel tomorrow, he's out for two months. It, it's ridiculously stupid. This is obviously the, I mean, and I, you know what I really want? I really do want Kevin Adams to lose this trade. Wh- whoever he trades him to, he gets yeah. nothing. Yeah, he gets, I, I, he I, I, gets I, nothing. Good yeah. day, sir. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. And, and and another thing that Kevin Adams has done is to bring up Dave's comment here about the Kings are the only other team that has anything worth you know facilitating a realistic trade for Eichel aside from the Rangers. They moved on. Kevin Adams played his hand so poorly that every team that was in on him has basically moved on and made their contingency plans for this season. So now what he has to do is go back to the situation again next summer and hope that he can get something done before that no movement clause kicks in. Because whatever leverage he had left at that point, if that no movement clause kicks in, sayonara, it's on, it's gone, it's over with. By the way, and just to it, mention it just, in here, I wouldn't even sign in the signed Billy Joel T-shirt. He just gets no. a Billy Joel T-shirt. Yeah, he, he just gets get a Billy Joel. No, he, he he gets one of those Super Bowl T-shirts of the wrong team winning that gets sent to some other some other country. We, we don't know where it goes when now, the other team loses. This would be a great time for me to say this. You should have gotten this from Hattrick Apparel. So, um, <laughs> that, If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.